Hi everyone! In this episode of Sailing Bluefin, we're going to talk about the electrical system. And why it's important to have the electrical system the way that you want it. So we're going to talk about the appliances that you want to run, the solar system, uh, that is the solar system on the roof, not the solar system up in the sky, and the inverter which turns the, uh, uh, the 12 volt power into uh, usable electricity and what else and that's the reason why we've done that so we can run all the appliances that we actually like and want as to having the coffee machine microwave and so on so that's why nothing happens without power on a boat <laughs> so just stay tuned and we have a look dad's just been building the frame for the solar panels so he's cut up all of the pieces that he needs and he's actually putting a bracket on the roof at the moment. So we're going to go up and see how he's going. Hello. Hi. I'm just putting on some solar panels. Oh no, we'll come around here. Aren't those little steps fantastic? They are. So I'm just putting on some solar panels. I've uh, I had to make up some adjustable Z brackets with uh, these bolts and uh, aluminium angle so I can adjust them and take them and also take the panels off easily because I can get to the bolts and actually remove the panels. This was uh, a 3 mil aluminium angle mm -hmm. and I had to cut each bracket and drill holes and uh, uh, make the brackets up and then to fit them to the panels and then to here. Now I've got all the holes in the roof I need to take the panels off secure the last bracket and then I've got to put Sikaflex sealer under all of this and into the holes because otherwise when it rains the water will come through the screw holes and down on top of this which is not what we want is it? There's six of these panels and they're 300 watts each it's 1800 watts which is a lot some houses have that much on them. Wow. One, two, three, four panels and Probably two panels right up the front. This is the next one to go on. Yeah. It's definitely a lot a bigger of an area up here compared to the 38. Yeah, it's it's definitely huge. got a lot of extra space to put the solar panels. Because yeah. we were thinking of putting an uh, extra extension onto the back when we uh, Yeah, putting a stainless steel um, frame on the back for the panels. And that, that's a good option because it also gives you some shade and shelter out the back. The, the problem with it is it's a bit difficult with, with the way the damage the whole dinghy here are made. There's only a limited amount, amount of space and the frame would have trouble holding these panels. They are okay for small panels but not big ones. So um, we decided to use the roof space. Yeah, hard panels because we've had problems with the flexi panels. They uh, they get very, very hot, they become inefficient, but the, the problem with them getting hot is that they, um, the, the surface starts to delaminate and crack up, and they can also damage the, uh, the roof if they get really, really, really hot. So good, good quality hard glass panels are the best. Have the necessary tools on board and they're fairly simple tools i've got two drills one for putting in the holes and the other one for screwing the screws uh, well, you need a couple of socket sets so that you can actually do all the bolts you uh, need screwdrivers and um, yeah and, and just and also all the, the nuts and bolts and screws and they should all be marine grade stainless steel you can get all that at Bunnings or any hardware store. There's not, there's nothing really special. Um, Except the bolts, maybe. 
Yeah, you can any marine supplier or, or even um, I actually managed to get these bolts of Bunnings. They had um, uh, 316 stainless steel marine grade bolts, which was good. So, one down, five to go. <laughs> Lots to go. <laughs> Big job. What are these? Uh, nylon nuts. The, the nuts have a nylon um, inner ring and that it's got nylon inside the nut and that's that keeps the nut in place so it can't undo itself. Oh. Hmm. Oh, big Would you say this is the holy grail for every sailor? Sick of Alex. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Horrible stuff to use though. It's sticky, it's like trying to work with honey. <laughs> so it's, it's not as easy to use as normal silicon. We just got to get this one in position and then we we'll put the screws in and the seal it. Yay! This will be our second solar panel. <laughs> Look at the blue water behind mum's head. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. So nice on that way with the clouds now. Here are the solar panels all finished now and you can see that I've put the brackets on each corner of the four panels. So four brackets on each panel and the brackets are actually made up of two pieces so I can easily unbolt them. And those brackets are sicaflexed really well to the uh, surface of the roof and screwed in. And I've used the MC4 connectors that you can kind of see in here and these are the uh, specific solar connectors and that allows me to easily unplug them. The cabling all comes through here behind this panel and then goes back down to the, uh, the main uh, bus bars. These are the solar panels that I've fitted to the roof of our catamaran. This is up on the cockpit roof. And I've put two on this side and two on that side. Now each of these panels is 300 watts, so there's 1200 watts in total. Some of that's gonna be tempered by the fact that there's always gonna be some shading. So as long as we get a decent amount at any one time, we're pretty happy with that. When I fitted these panels about a week and a half ago, I made up brackets myself. I made these out of aluminium angle and I've used two pieces of angle for each bracket. One piece of angle is screwed into the roof of the cockpit. The other angle is screwed into the uh, solar panel, the bottom of the solar panel. And then the two of them are bolted together. The advantage of this is it allows me to undo these bolts at any one time and take the panels off easily. So, there's four of these on each panel. And if you look underneath, you can see that I've used what are called MC4 plugs to join everything together. These panels are all wired in parallel. So, there's a, there's a joiner cable where these two panels come together and then it joins together with the panels on the other side in an access port here, so they're all paralleled together. Back to the solar controller. 
So the reason you might care about why you connect your system in series or parallel is that the theory is that in series your system will act as a single system and you'll have more problems if a panel is shaded. Uh, in parallel they theoretically act on their own as single entities but then you have to deal with the voltage drop and having heavier cable to manage the uh, um, higher amperage that's coming through them. In my experience, we've uh, on this boat they're all in parallel, on our previous boat they're all in series and then I changed them to parallel. My experience is that it didn't really make much difference. So I'm not really sure whether it makes as much difference as people say, but in this case we've put them all in parallel and they're working really well. And the difference between series and parallel is that in parallel you, your voltage will stay the same and your amperage will increase. In a series system, your amperage stays the same, but the voltage increases. So if you have four panels of 20 volts, you'll end up with 80 volts in the series. In parallel, they'll stay at 20 volts. So what about shading? We mentioned shading, and shading is a problem. If 10% of your panel gets shaded, you'll typically lose 90%, maybe even more of the power in that panel. And on a boat, there's a lot, lots of things that can shade a panel. You've got the mast, you've got the boom, you've got lines, and a single line going across a panel can render that panel almost useless in some cases. So the theory is that if you can put the panels on both sides, you should get two panels at any one time giving you full power. In our case, that's about 600 watts. And coincidentally, our solar controller can only handle about 600 watts output. So we're pretty happy if we can get six or 800 watts at any one time, uh, because that's giving us about 50 amps of input to the battery. But shading, yes, it's a problem. He's enjoying the shading. <laughs> hey. T-Rex. So technology choice is actually a big question that people have. And we spoke a little bit earlier about flexible panels versus glass panels. So monocrystalline versus polycrystalline, um, you can tell what it is by looking at the panel. The monocrystalline have little diamonds uh, in the pattern on, the, on the, the panels, and the polycrystalline have just got squares. And I'll show you that in a second. Monocrystalline are a little bit more efficient, poly polycrystalline are a little bit cheaper. And this is monocrystalline here. Now we chose to use monocrystalline so that we have less area for the same power. But if you chose polycrystalline, um, a lot of people choose it and they can be very good quality panels and give you nearly the same output for really not much bigger. The termination of the cabling from the solar panels comes to the solar controller. So there's two cables here from a positive and negative from the solar panels and a positive and negative going into the battery. This is a Victron solar controller, so it's got Bluetooth built in and a great app. All of our stuff is Victron and the Victron stuff seems to be quite reliable and intuitive. Just looking now at the Bluetooth app for the Victron solar controller and looking right here we can see how much solar we've got coming in in watts and we also see the voltage and amperage coming in and the voltage and amperage that's going into the battery. If we go to the next page, we can see the history and it's telling us how much we have had over the last 30 days in solar. Um, and you can see yesterday we had 4.76 kilowatt hours and today we're up to 2.38 kilowatt hours. Down the bottom, it gives you some important information about the minimum and maximum levels of your battery and your total yield for the day. And it also tells you about any errors. So if there's an overcharge error in the solar controller or um, some other sort of error that will come up there. And we have had a couple of those. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoy it, stay tuned for part two. Part two will be on the inverter and part three will be about cabling and putting in the power points. Mm -hmm. So all good stuff. <laughs> Bye! Bye. <laughs>